On this episode of the Hyperfast Agent Podcast, we are joined by Dustin Brown from the Carrie Scholl team. Listen in as Dustin presents at the Hyperfast Sales Summit. We hope you enjoy. Or at least, what, what an intro, look at that. Making me proud up here. All right, how are we doing so far today? Unbelievable! Man, it feels cool to be on stage for more than like two minutes, you know? I'm like, wow, man, I got 40 minutes. Holy man, I better have something good to say up here. Um, so yeah, I'm Dustin Brown. I started with Kerry, the Kerry Shull team uh, about five, almost six years ago. Uh, I'm an ISA, ISA manager. Does anybody not know what an ISA is? I said that to someone yesterday and they're like, what's a ISA? <laughs> There's probably some people on an inside sales agent, right? So our job is all these leads, all this, you know, big money that they're spending, it's coming to us, right? And even not, not, not big money, anybody, the, we're the people that are answering the phone, right? We're the first initial impression of somebody inquiring with the carry shell team. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done a lot of different types of sales, just a little bit about my background. Um, I've, I've sold advertising, sold phone service, insurance, uh, knocked on doors plenty of times. Uh, but I, I really, I really liked the phone. I was talking to Sean yesterday and he's like, you know, people are out knocking on doors, but if you can get on a phone, you can really compress, compress timeframes, right? Like I, I like walking around neighborhoods. I could probably use that a little bit more actually after this uh, pandemic sitting in my house. But, um, you know, you can call 100 people, 200 people, talk to as many people as you want and you can get it done really quickly. So um, another part of it is that not a lot of people like to make phone calls. Has anybody's phone ever weighed 5,000, 10,000 pounds? You're like, ah, oh, this thing's so heavy. I don't know. Now, maybe, let, me, let me browse some properties, make sure I can find some stuff. So. Um, yeah, I figured if I could get good at something that people didn't like to do, then it could be valuable, you know, and that's, that's really what the inside sales agent does is make phone calls. And I get a lot of questions about, you know, how do you find ISAs? How do you find inside sales agents? And I'm like, you know, there are people out there that like making phone calls. We're a little crazy, but, um, you know, I, I like it. I can get on the phone and I get excited to do it. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to cover how to convert leads today. Uh, my slides are a little bare, you could say. I was really trying to make them interesting with like memes and stuff on them. So I didn't write a lot of content on them. Um, and I have like, I, I don't have too many slides. So I'm going to talk about a lot of the things uh, that we do because I'm still making phone calls, right? Like I run the inside sales team. We just hired our 12th and 13th ISA and I'm still in there calling with them, you know? So, um, you know, there'll be a lot of things that I can, I, I, I'll say, and I, I listen to the ISAs, the new ISAs, the new agents, there's small things that you can change in the simple conversations that you have on the phone that can really make a difference, you know, and you can maximize your time that you're spending on the phone, right? Um, so converting leads, right? How do we do it? What's the first step? Come on, look at that. That's a good one, right? Come on, come on. And by the way, uh, my wife did help me with this. So hi to Cristiani. I know she's, she's watching. So um, no pressure, no pressure, right? So call the lead as soon as possible or answer the phone. Has anybody tried to inquire or call somewhere and you couldn't, nobody answered the phone? Have you ever called and got a disconnected number? Right, imagine that's you, right? Imagine you're calling and for me, you know, I did the disc test and I was talking to our new ISA Katya and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm really into the disc. And I, I just found my old one and I was actually a high eye. Um, and I remember Carrie saying that, and I think I have to take it again, but I think I'm becoming more of a high D and I think it's probably from hanging around with Carrie and Dan. Cause they're like, you know, so now when I'm calling places, I'm like, if it rings more than like three times, I'm like, come on, let, let, let me get somebody on the phone. So 
this is critical, right? Answer the phone. I mean, that's, that's like the, the most important thing. And then calling the lead as soon as possible, it's almost like magic. When you call somebody, has anybody ever called an online lead and the person was still on the website and they just hit? It's like they're in a trance. They're like, whoa, I just hit enter. I haven't even, I haven't even left the page. You can literally say anything to that person and they're like, okay, yep, all right. I'm telling you, it's, a, it's amazing. So like they say our rule is always under five minutes. Oh, we got some ISAs on here. There's Cody right there. Look at Cody Brown, Mr. Brown, he's a good man. I saw the last name, I'm like, you're hired. No. Um, so, you know, you, if, you, if you get them there, we say under five minutes is like our standard, but really it's within seconds you wanna call that person. And we're really working hard on technology to make sure that happens every time, but that is absolutely critical. Um, if you don't, I mean, you know, I call realtor.com leads and sometimes I get beat, right? Like realtor.com, people are really fast on realtor.com. They actually had a technology at one point that was like less than a second that they were calling the, the, the people. Uh, here's an interesting thing about a realtor.com lead or a lead that goes to other agents. Uh, you'll have somebody that says, Oh, I'm interested in finding out the condo fees. Has anybody, we get those all the time, right? Online in inquiries, people just asking about things. So I call them up. I, I, I say, oh, hi, yeah, it's Dustin with the Carrie Shell team. You inquire about one, two, three Main Street. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, I, I already talked to somebody about that. Who, who would say, okay, all right, well, all right, thanks. Call us if you need anything. Anybody, come on, be honest, be honest. Right, I've done it in the beginning. I'm like, man, no, I got the person on the phone. So they say, yeah, I found out all the information. Oh, great. Hey, are you thinking of making a move in the next couple months? I just go into it, right? And then through the conversation, I realized the agent that got in touch with that person, they didn't book an appointment. They gave him the condo fees. The person was like, oh, wow, that's way too high. Oh, well, thanks, bye, right? Seriously, I'm not kidding. Oh, I, I do that a lot. I, I, get the, I get them like after a few people have talked to them because we're going through our script, right? It's like, I am, I was talking to one of our ISAs, I think it was Sarah, and you are gonna talk to people that you're gonna have flashbacks. I, you get flashbacks. Like some people are like, yeah, I already talked to somebody, bye. And they hang up on you, right? We love being hung up on, right? I do, because I know I'm closer to getting somebody on an appointment, right? You will have flashbacks of the, that person, so it will hold you back from asking the next questions. All the time, I'm like, in my head, they're like, there's no way that this guy is gonna want to book an appointment with, like, he, he knows all he needs to know, you know? Like, I have these voices in my head telling me this, but I just force myself to ask. Even if I don't feel like it's actually gonna work, I'm like, well, do you, do you think you need to sell your home before you buy? I mean, would you be interested in the, free market evaluation. And I'm not in my mind, I'm like, he's definitely saying no. And they're like, oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you gotta try it. So next time when you feel like you shouldn't, just do it, right? So calling the leads as soon as possible, getting them on the phone. And then, you know, we book a lot of appointments that way, but we also book a lot of appointments out of our database. So this is, you know, a next, oops. Here we go. Oh man, I ruined my, my baby picture there. Um, have your lead sync with your CRM automatically. I know it's kind of like a boring thing to say, but you know, we have leads that inquired with us years ago, two, three, four years ago. We called somebody like 35 times, um, never answered the phone. We finally got them on the phone and I said, Hey, are you still, you know, you inquired through one of our websites. Are you still looking for a house, they're like, no, we actually, we bought a house already. What do you, what is, what does anybody say to that person? Congratulations, right? That's, yeah, exactly. Hey, congratulations on your new home. What else? What, what would you say to that? We bought a house already. When are you going to sell it? <laughs> That's a good one. When do you want to sell it? Yeah, how long ago, right? When this particular scenario, the person bought the house they inquired about, and my go-to that I always use is congratulations first. And then by the way, do you have another home that you still need to sell? Because you'd be surprised people 
have other homes. I had someone that had an eight hundred thousand dollar townhouse. They're like, "Yeah, yeah, we should get around to selling that." I was like, "This is genius, man. People got out." I'm like, "All right, perfect. Nice commission on that one." Um, but that's it. And then the person says, "Yeah, actually, you know what? The house that we bought, we're gonna be we're gonna be selling this one. We're moving closer to our daughter." So this was a lead that was in our system for years. Never got them on the phone. Finally got them on the phone, and now they're coming back around, right? So having those leads sync up to your CRM is crucial. You know, there's like a ton of CRMs out there, right? You're getting your lead sources from all over the place. You got to have them in a place where you can always pull them. Uh, and that's what I always say. You know, a lot of people are like, you know, what ISA also, hey, just jump in and call your leads, you know, just put them in a list and don't look at each lead before you call them. Does anybody get that urge? They're like, oh man, 300 leads. Yeah, but I don't know any of their information. I don't know the property they inquired about. I, I we get that urge. Like, you really want me to call these people like without doing research about the home that they inquired about? Really? That's a good excuse not to call, right? <laughs> I remember the first time I called a referral, I was like, I had the script. I sat in my car. I, I was practicing for like 15 minutes. I'm like, I got this perfect. I called and got the voicemail. <laughs> Literally, right? So like, you're going to do that with your online leads. You're like, yeah, yeah, you call, numbers disconnected, right? So what we found is just dial them, right? Like try to segment your list as much as you can. You know, try to clean it up as much as you possibly can and then just dial. Um, and you get good at it. You know, you get good at, really, I mean, we, sometimes, you, you know, you're dialing on a list and your computer freezes. Has that ever happened to somebody in here? Yeah, look, uh, the ISAs from our team are like, yeah, actually, your computer freezes. You don't even know the person's name, right? Hey, it's Dustin with the Kerry Shull team. We're checking in. You inquired with us because these people had inquired at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you still thinking of making a move? Could be a buyer or a seller. But you're getting the conversation going. And you sound smooth, too. You know, like you're, you're rolling with it. Um, yeah, that's an interesting one on the computer freezes. Hopefully that doesn't happen to anybody. And don't worry, I'm not trying to scare you, all right? Your computer will be good, all right? <laughs> Just make the call. Uh, but, you know, you get good. Or sometimes we call somebody that has already maybe had an appointment with us. They get stuck in the list. You know, I called somebody one time and I said, hey, it's Dustin with the Kerry Shull team. We're checking in, see how your home search is going. And they say, oh, yeah, actually, Dennis and Lauren just left my house about an hour ago. I'm like, oh, man, this person's definitely not supposed to. Oh, hey, yeah, we're courtesy called. Check it in. See how it, how'd it go. The guy was like, oh, it's great. Right? And we make those calls, too, check statuses. He might have said, hey, you know what? Actually, that guy, Dennis, man, he's from up north. We don't like that guy. I say that because he's from Boston or Rhode Island. You know, <laughs> We can make those jokes. Patriots fan? Go Pats. All right. That is on record. And he's on Tom Brady, right? Moved to Tampa Bay. Anybody a Brady fan in there? Yeah, all right. But he, they say he did what every person from New England does. He got old and moved to Florida. That's what he did. Um, so, yeah, you know, you want to check in with these people because guess what? They're going to tell you things if you're an, an ISA or if you're making calls following up. Hey, you know what? The, the agent that was here, too loud. We didn't like her. You think they're ever going to say that to her to her face? Right? Hey, we're a team. We have multiple agents. That's one of the benefits of working with us, right? So, you know, th those, those are some things. CRM, having it in there, priceless. Okay, now the baby. Give them what they want. So we did, we've done a lot of studies on showings and in-person sit-down appointments. Has anybody ever got an online leap and the person says, I want to see this house? And you're like, sure, I'll show it to you. You go there, maybe they show up with their agent. Has that ever happened to you? Right? You're like, oh. They're like, oh, you're not the listing agent? That's another one I'm talking about. Really? Oh. Or they show up and like they don't even look at you. Like they're just standing at the door. They run in. Come on, we've been there, right? So what we train on like crazy is converting a showing request to an appointment to sit down. So we have an ISA, Frank, I don't know if he's on the call over here, but we had a, uh, a talk this past week. And I remember the moment that I had the revelation on how to do this. Uh, because, you know, we have it in our mind, like, man, we're, all right, we're going to convert them to an in-person, in-person. So the person calls, they're like, hey, maybe it's a million dollar lead, right? They call up. 
yeah, hey, I want to see this house Saturday. Oh, great. Okay. Are you thinking of making a move in the next couple months? Yeah, yeah. We want to see the house. Oh, awesome. Do you have a home that you need to sell? Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't know. But we want to see the house. Oh, awesome. So do you want to sell the house first? I don't want to talk about selling my house. Has anybody gotten into these conversations? Yeah, right? So I used to be like, man, this is a million dollar lead. Like, man, I got, all right, I'm getting nervous. Then I'm getting caught up and all this. And they're like, you know, I'll forget it. We'll call somebody else. If you don't want to show me the house, I'll call somebody else, right? That happens. And you're like, well, man, okay, why? Well, right, we'll show you the house. Now we're going in like, you know, please, you know? So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Give them what they want. Hey, all right. I want a request a showing Saturday, one o'clock. I call, or even if they say, hey, we're interested in the house. Do you want to see the house? Yeah, we want to see the house. Oh, great. When do you want to see it? Saturday, one o'clock. Fantastic. We're available Saturday at one o'clock. And you, you can feel the conversation. The person goes, ah, I got it. I got what I wanted. Right. And a lot of times these are people like if Carrie Shull called to get a house and I tried talking to her about other stuff, she's, she probably would hang up on my face. Like I would, it wouldn't even get a response. It would just be hang up. So we say, give them what they want. Book the showing. Oh, great. Yeah. Saturday, one o'clock. Perfect. Hey, are you thinking of making a move in the next couple months? Oh yeah. You know, we're thinking, uh, then guess what? We're going to go another way, get them into the conversation. And then you just continue to run through the script. You might even book a move up buyer. Hey, yeah, you would love it. Wow. Why don't we do this? We'll start out at your home. We'll give you that free market evaluation. And then we'll go take a look at the property. Does that still work for Saturday? Yeah. What's your address? Boom. You just got to move up buyer. Does anybody want more listings? <laughs> That's it right there off showings or even better. The everyday open house call. Who's gotten that call, right? I know there's probably some ISAs out there that just shivered right there. They're like, whoo, everyday open house. We had a bet. I still owe Peter a beer. The first person to book a move up buyer on an everyday open house sign call. Peter was the first one. You've probably seen him in the ISA course, man. Uh, but that's another one. You know, they're standing, and for, for you to, who don't know, everyday open houses, they see a sign that says everyday open house call for entry. So the people are standing there and they're like, hi, yeah, what's the code for, uh, for this listing you have over here? And by the way, they don't know what street it's on. They don't, <laughs> what's the code? And we have to take that and convert it to an in-person appointment at their house to sell their house and show them off market properties. <laughs> I could tell you how to do it. That's gonna be like the weekend session right there, the whole thing. No, I'm just kidding. It's simple, it's simple. Oh, you wanna see the house? Absolutely, we can show you the house. What's a good time for you? Give them, the, give them what they want. Give them the time. Oh, great, yeah, I can hang out. Oh, great. Do you, are you thinking of making a move in the next couple months? You go right into it. So what you're really looking for is timing and motivation. Who's seen our, our script that we use? A couple people? A couple people? You know, we have an ISA that he's like, man, I figured it out. You got to follow the script. <laughs> it's like, boom, man. There it is. And I remember when I started, we're actually, uh, we've been in a lot of different offices, but keeping continuing to grow. I remember starting, I'm like, I'm just going to read the script word for word. I knew it from all my experience in sales. I'm like, I'm literally just going to read this thing word for word because I know it flows. Right. And that's a little bit on my next, next slide, but you're looking for timing. Alteration. Our script does have timing questions in it, but it doesn't say, Hey, what's your motivation for moving? Right. You have to get those things as you're asking the questions. Right. So are you thinking of making a move in the next couple months? Oh yeah, a couple months. Do you have? A, oh, do you own a home now? Are you renting now? Oh yeah, we're renting now. Great. If you were to make a move, when do you think that might be? If it was the perfect time, I just asked them a second timing question. When I started, I deleted that question from the script. I literally did, and because I was like, "Why is this in here twice?" And then Carrie saw it. She's like, "What the hell? <laughs> Where'd the question go?" I'm like, "Oh, we deleted it. It was twice." No, it's there for a reason because the next one, if you were to make a move, one would be the perfect time. It's more open-ended, right? And then the person is starting to open up. And as they're talking, they're telling you exactly what you need to say to get the appointment. Here's another, uh, another thing, right? Have you ever gotten somebody on the phone? I'm looking at Stephanie, I should put, killing the phones, right? They're, they're like, oh no, I'm at work, can't, can't really talk. 
or you, you call them, oh, hi, it's Dustin with the Kerry Show team. We're checking in to see how your home search is going. Good. Has anybody had those? Are you thinking of making a move next time? Yeah. Right? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Here's a, here's a, a, a challenge, uh, something fun you can do. Keep asking them questions. Keep asking questions. I had a woman one time and she was in a bad mood. She was. And I was asking her a question and I could just tell that she, something happened that day that she was upset. And I just kept asking, huh, you know, are you tough month? You know, how in the cell? Just one word answers. And then I heard her go, all right, I'm gonna tell you. And she talked for like 15 minutes straight. And she was a pre-approved, looking at a million plus property, had already been working with agents, been losing out on homes. Like she was like ready to go. And she talked for like 15 minutes and she goes, I don't even know why I'm telling you all this. I haven't really told anybody that. And I'm just sitting there listening. You know, I'm taking all the notes, right? But I got her to actually say, all right, I'm going to do this. Because that's what people are thinking in their head. They're like, is this phone call worth my time? Right? If you say, like Carrie said, hi, this is Dustin with the Carrie Show team. Oh, how are you today? <laughs> Kiss of death right there. She hung up on her, the school teacher. You hear that? That's crazy. But, all right, so here's another thing too. The person I call, they say, hello, this is David. How do you think I'm going to respond to that person? Hi, David, this is Dustin with the Kerry Shoal team. What do you think he's going to do? I'm going to just be sitting there. There are going to be crickets in the background, right? Now, if the person answers the phone like this, hello. I'm like, hi, is this Mary? She's like, yes, it's Mary. How are you? How do you think I'm going to talk to her? Right there, that first like couple words that they say, you know how your conversation is going to go. And I do ask them for their name. Hi, is this, uh, I'm calling for John. Yes, yeah, this is John. Hey, it's Dustin with the Carrie Shell team. Checking in. We saw you inquire with us. We're seeing how your home search is going. Real fast. Can I get a, can I get Mike? Mike check. We got a question from Zoom. I'm from an- Make sure it's an easy one, all right? from outbound call a caller says i'm just looking i'm not ready yet just send me the list of properties if i like them or if my wife likes it i'll call you back fantastic how do you overcome that yeah because we have properties that aren't listed right and that's one of our one of our benefits is we have homes that you probably haven't seen listed online and sometimes these homes they might not even have a sign out in front of them right we have people building new construction homes there's sometimes distressed sellers right they could have had a death in the family something you know so we're actually not able to email these off-market properties out. But what I can do is I can have you meet with one of our buyer specialists. We can go through everything with you. And if you do see something that you like, we can set up private tours to see those homes. So uh, our office is located in Arlington. You can come here or we'd be happy to come to you. What, what do you think works best? If you say that and they're serious, they're gonna say, yeah, we can come in. <laughs> and that's the thing, like you have to, have those ready. Obviously, the more times you say it, the better you're going to get at it. But I see a lot of ISAs and a lot of agents ask for the appointment too early. And I was doing this. Andrea, if she's watching, she's the one that called me out on this when I started. I was actually arguing with a, with a, a, a client. Literally, I'm like, yeah, but they're off market properties. Like these aren't people. And, you know, it was bad. And she's listening. It was like eight o'clock at night. Yeah, there's Andrea right there. She's probably laughing. Remember, she's like, she comes in. She's like, Dustin, all right, like, you got to, you got to change that a little bit. Right? But she said you have to give them value first, and then ask for the meeting. So if I say, hey, we have properties that aren't listed online, do you want to take a look at those? And the person, if they're serious, what do you think they're going to say? <laughs> right? If they now sometimes people don't respond to you, and you you have to come back again, and ask them again until they get the answer out. Yes, I do wanna see those properties. Perfect. Now you just got an appointment, basically. If you agree to that, then you've just now pre-committed to an appointment. All right. We wanna give them an offer they can't refuse, right? And I had a really good meme, but it was like uh, something we couldn't use here. So it was, a, it was a godfather one, you know, of course. So are you, here's a phenomenal question, okay. So you go on all these leads, person, yeah, we're good. What, all right. Someone says, yeah, I know, we're, we're all set. We're all set. What, what do most people say? What do you think? 
You're not looking? What does the most agents say? Most insights say all the callers. Oh, no, we're, we're good. We're all set. What do you think a lot of people say? Okay, what would your, be your follow-up on that? Did you already buy a house? Oh, did you already buy a house? Yeah, we bought a house. Click. Now you're part in the, putting that in your CRM as dead lead. Lost lead, right? Try this one. No, we're all set. Oh, are you not finding what you're looking for? Is that what it is? Try it. You're going to be on the phone for another five minutes with that person telling you. And guess what? Of course, if they say, yeah, we're really not seeing anything, I have the solution. There's a, a, a bunch of properties that sell before you even get access to them. They sell before they hit the market. And by the way, even if you have one listing and you're an individual agent and you walk out of a house with a listing agreement, what do you have in your hand? An off-market property <laughs> right there. They could want to put it on the market the next day, but you got it right there, right? I mean, not everybody's calling from different states. I don't know the, the rules or anything, but that's how, you know, properties get sold quick like that, right? There's a feeding frenzy on it. Are you not finding what you're looking for? It's, it's fantastic. Try that one. And then we're not selling. Dan was talking about the expireds. And uh, I know Richard's probably out here. This is golden. Would you take an offer if we had somebody interested? Th now, this is somebody just had their house on the market last week, right? So, you know, like if they say, no, we're not selling, like, yeah, you are, like, you, you just didn't sell it, right? Would you take an offer on the home if we had somebody interested? Oh, we're not selling. So if we had a buyer that was ready to write an offer, would you consider it? Yeah, we're not selling. Oh, okay, are, I mean, are you thinking about making a move? If there was a compelling offer, would you want to take a look at it? Three ways I asked them right there. Three ways. So if you can't, if they don't answer your question, you got to ask it a different way. Because I all I'm waiting for is, yes, I would take an offer. <sighs> Boom, you just got an appointment. <laughs> but we have to listen. Yeah, if we had somebody interested, we have buyers that are looking in your area. Would you, I mean, would you be open if we did have somebody that wanted to submit an offer? Oh, why didn't you, why didn't you call us when our house was on the market? Uh, well, sometimes it's just, sometimes it could be a mistake in the, in the system. There's a lot of errors. I mean, we've seen it, right? Houses get miscategorized. I mean, there's a million ways why, how we didn't see the property. Um, you know, wh why do you think the house hasn't sold? <laughs> right. So the bottom line on this one is you have to get them to answer the question. That's really the key uh, because then you know they're listening too, right? And then guess what? If I say it, they don't believe me. If they say it, I hope you believe yourself. There's a thing called the subconscious, right? It's kind of weird. Like that's a whole nother talk. I'm sure you probably all know about that, but you kind of prove yourself right from your subconscious. So if you're agreeing, try this, right? Try getting them excited enough through these questions that they ask you for an appointment. That's like the guru status when someone's like, wow, that sounds so good. Do you guys meet with people? <laughs> it's possible. I've had it happen. You'll get so good at like building it up that the person will literally be like, really, do you guys do appointment? Like, how do I get those? So that's fun. All right, here we go. That's a good one. Get the promise. So we book, we, <laughs> we're on the phone. We're making hundreds of calls. We got to the office early. First of all, right, when someone answers the phone, go for it. I know, I don't, I remember somebody said, I always tell the ISAs, I'm like, I think it was Mike Tyson said, throw every punch with murderous intent. Okay. I just, I can never forget that, you know? And it's like, we're on the phone. I'm going to ask and I'm going down swinging, right? Aaron, one of our agents, he said, if they hang up on you, you won right? Just go for it. So finally, they agree, you get them, right? Get the promise. If an emergency happens and you're not able to make it, if you can promise to give us a call, because we do work by appointment. And then the awkward silence. What's the, There's probably some awkward, I, I've never done an in-person like buyer or listening. I know there's awkward silences there. Uh, and I always make a joke, like I'm inside sales agent, like I'm on the phone. If people are afraid of the phone, like you're in person, right? If it goes bad, you're in the house, you know, like you're not hanging the phone. You got to like, that's real awkward, right? So 
if you can promise to give us a call, so we do work by appointment and you wait. If they don't respond, you still have some work to do because this person is probably not listening to you. <laughs> They're like, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh. They're not responding. If you promise to give us a call, we do work by appointment. And then if I think that they're not listening, I'll come back and be like, so do you have any other questions before we get off the call? And I'm telling you so many times, they're like, so this is for buying a house or, and now I'm like, all right, we have to go back through this, right? So you really need to make sure you're listening to what they're saying and how it's going. Get the promise. And a lot of people, if they are listening, they're like, oh yeah, absolutely, we'll let you know. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna do it. And then once they do that, you have to reiterate the value because when you're a closer, a lot of times they hang up the phone and they don't know what they just agreed to. <laughs> they're just so smooth that they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And they hang up and they're like, hmm, that was interesting. So I say, yeah, I promise to give us a call as we work by appointment. Yeah, okay, hey, great. You know what, Lauren, she is so, she's gonna, she is perfect for what you're looking for. I know that she's gonna be able to help you out with your search. She can't wait to see you on Saturday at 10 a.m. Take care. Well, now they go off the phone. They're like, oh yeah, okay, that's right. All right. So this is the last thing I had on here because this is kind of like the engine that runs all of these calls, <laughs> all of our business, right? It's, an, it's your attitude. Attitude is everything, right? And this, I, I wanted to share it. Does anybody, does anybody know that this was a real thing? An attitude indicator? Literally. This is a indicator on a plane it's called the attitude in it not not altitude attitude look it up this is straight off wikipedia you know everything's right on there right <laughs> yeah it was me that edited the page you're gonna go over there and see that i put it in there right your attitude indicator known as a gyro horizon artificial horizon the flight instrument gives a pilot of the aircraft oriented relative to Earth's horizon, it gives an immediate indication of the smallest orientation change. Wow, I get, that's why I can never forget that. I'm like, man, okay, right? So you know, if you're calling, if you have a good attitude, you know where you're going, you know what's gonna happen. And I can tell you, I've booked thousands of appointments and I literally, I tried to pull how many calls I made, but it does, like it, the system crashes. And I'm telling myself it's because there's so many. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> All right. But if you hang up, right? Or it's like the end of your calling session. You're almost there. It's like, all right, man, one more, right? Let's just, let's go again. You're right. You're right around the corner from getting a, a good appointment, good lead. Um, so these are kind of like, I mean, you know, these are some of the things that we use to convert leads in the ISA department. Uh, it's been successful. We have a good, a good, not a good, an unbelievable ISA team, which they hear uh, on the on the Zoom over here. Um, so I do have a couple minutes left. I just want to ask if there's any questions. I know a lot of people have questions about ISAs in general or converting leads. What's a good conversion rate from uh, talking to? I mean, I guess in a day's time, how many people should you be looking at trying to convert to set appointments to mm -hmm. each day? A lot of times it'll come down to the list, you know? So, you know, if you make maybe two, 300 calls, you should probably talk to 20 or 30 people if you're on like an auto dialer. And then, you know, if you can book, it's kind of like 10, two to three out of that. Two to three out of 20. Yeah. Okay. If, I mean, and again, it, it really depends on the list. Like if it's some list that hasn't been called a lot, you're going to get a lot more people on the phone and then, you know, you might be able to get a little bit more and then it's going you know, if you're hard closing people, then your no shows might go up a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of things that we do to, to lower down the no shows, but those are pretty solid numbers that we've seen just throughout my career here. Two, 300, 20 to 30, two to three. Dustin, for some of us who need to hire their first ISA, where do you recommend looking? Well, that's, that's interesting. Um, I came from Craigslist and I, a lot of people make jokes about Craigslist. Like me and Jamie both came from Craigslist. Um, and I told the story last night, I made the call and it was a recruiter and uh, she hung up on me. Like I was telling her something. She's like, oh, I gotta, gotta take a call. Bye. And she hung the phone up on me. <laughs> but she called me back. But um, yeah, we've, we've gotten ISAs from 
everywhere. Uh, Craigslist, we do um, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, referrals are really good. Um, you know, you, it's not so much about experience, right? Like we have a ISA, he's on the call here, his name's Travis. He was a manager of a movie theater, right? And he's like selling $10 bags of popcorn. And then he said, I was a math teacher for a year and it took me, it only took me a year to figure out that I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, and he came on about two, maybe two months ago. He booked 66 appointments his first month, around 60 his next month. He got top ISA two months in a row. Um, you know, and, and he had like no formal sales background. Yeah. So we, we've gotten them from all over, like Dustin said, car dealerships have been good. Yeah, that's where I was um, working right before I came here, in a BDC in a car dealer. We've we've closed telemarketers that call us before. I would think right now you would be able to have success in restaurant and retail. Those people know how to deal with people and a lot of them can't, or are done basically, right? So those industries might be good to look for. Sometimes agents are good that don't want to have to do the nights and weekends. And if there's other good ISAs in your area, uh, I, would, I would call those teams lead gen numbers on Zillow and just hang up after one ring and see how long it takes till someone calls you back. And if they call you back really quickly at like an odd hour, uh, that might be a good person to talk to, right? Cause they're already an ISA. We, we did that a couple of times. I, we had a really good person that we, we got, we basically got that person a really good raise, yeah, we got a raise. at their, at their current place, but we're, you know, sometimes that works too. There's a question from Zoom. Um, again, what if the online buyer lead tells you his initial home search criteria and you know what he wants is unrealistic? Would you let him know on the spot or book an appointment? I book an appointment. Here's another very important thing is that we don't want to do appointments over the phone because it's very easy to make a decision over the phone. If you hear that, like, oh, no, I'm good. No, no, no. I, you know, I would say, well, that's, you know, interesting. I'm going to relay all that information to the buyer specialists. I'll make sure they have the information prepared when you meet with them in person. If it was me booking it, I might say, hey, you know, I'd love to go over this information with you. It wouldn't be fair to do it over the phone. Why don't we, why don't we set up a time to meet? One more question from Zoom. Um, what about hiring an ISA that is remote, per se, from the Philippines or something like that? Um, we, we've, we've worked better with local ISAs. I mean, we really push to have people here in the office. You know, there, there's just something about being around the other ISAs. We bounce things off each other. We do have a couple remote ISAs, but they're here, like, they're, you know, in Texas or uh, some, someone a little further out in Virginia. Um, but people that are here in this country, I mean, you know, there's a lot of great people around the world. My, my wife's from Brazil. Um, but we prefer, you know, to work with people local. And then you, hi you know, you hire them. You're going in and you're vetting the person. You're going through the interview process. And, you know, you're going to know if you like the person, you know. And then you're also going to give them the script and have them run the script before you hire them. That's the, the, the make or break, right? But sometimes you're not that good at the script, but you did really well on the interview, so you give them a chance, you know? Um, cool. All right, all right. Any well, questions? Uh, one more. Oh, um, one more question, okay. Yeah. Um, wait, so, you know, when you call two to 300 uh, people at the same time, do you leave a voicemail? And if not, why not? And if you do, what do you say? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Um, you know, you see a number, we, we might just try to get callbacks. Uh, I like to leave kind of vague messages. Uh, sometimes I'll say, hey, it's Dustin, Carrie Shell team. Got a quick question for you. If you can call me back, that'd be great, you know. Um, so I wouldn't say, oh, you know, I want to call the check-in on your real estate needs. Some, sometimes, I mean, you know, if it, you don't know who the people are on the list and you want to drop a voicemail, but uh, a, a really good tip for the voicemails and the callbacks, because you'll get a lot of callbacks. Don't say, oh, this is Dustin with the Carry. Hi, Dustin with the Carry Shell team. How may I help you? You're going to get a hang up on. Hello, this is Dustin. That's how I do it.
the callbacks are the real money because that person's live ready right there, you know. So welcome. Do you guys have specialized ISAs? I just fired my team in Philippines and I found that my ISA was very good with converting FISBOs, but he was really bad at geo um, leads. So um, it's is it something that you guys do? Do you have someone focusing on FISBOs, expires, geo marketing, and all of that? Do you find that the conversion is better? Because I guess you can't expect an ISA to be, you know, master at quite all types of conversations. In my opinion, I may I may be wrong. I guess our ISAs are. Except we, we, we do require them all to be masters at home. Um, but we do have quite a team now where we are getting a little more specialized. Yeah, so you can really be focused on it. And that also comes down to your CRM as well to make sure the right leads are going to the right ISAs and you can really dial it in that way. Um, so that is definitely encouraged. Um, but I'll be honest, we haven't done a good job with that. Our ISAs are all like jumping in on anything um, and our conversion numbers are still pretty good. So. It can only get better from there, you know. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Thanks for staying to the end of our video. For more videos like this, click here. If you're looking to get notifications when you do a new video, make sure you subscribe below. See you soon.